all right guys welcome back so in the last video we configured some stuff for our for our testing environment now let's finally connect to the database but before that we need to create a database a test database so create mean app db test so this will be our test database which is empty no problem now let's check if our naming is fine mean app db test right so we're basically going to connect our test db first in our test environment in our runner.js file so first of all let's describe what we're testing we're testing the post api api and let's have a callback function so in our post api what are we doing first of all we have in every test environment you always have three stages one is the setup stage one is the actual tests test uh, actual like test functions and then the lastly is the teardown stage for example before testing all your functions you have to have some sort of a setup like setting up your database or creating some dummy data so that you could test uh, test against it and in the end, after you're done, you want to empty your database. So you want to remove whatever you have tested with, whatever test data that you've created in the beginning of the test. After you're done testing, you basically tear them down, like you just delete them. So before, we have a before block. So before we start our test, let's have a callback. So before we start our test, we need to first connect our mongoose database. So mongoose.connect our test db so config dot test db right so once you are connected you want to first check if you are connected properly or, or not so you want to check if like you want to just console dot log whether you're connected to config dot test db this this part of the code will be only be executed if this part is successfully executed like if your config dot test db is properly connected so this is like after you're connected just console log it so we just want to see the condition and you have a callback called done because what what done does is that whenever you're connecting something this might take a while depending on how uh, uh, depending on your database condition like depending on your mongod server so before that before before this code even finishes executing and if you write something over here like console log which takes like milliseconds to to basically execute and when and as we know the javascript is asynchronous so when you try to when you try to write two to three lines of code where the one line one part of the code has a lot of uh, has a lot takes more time compared to the other lines then that line will be executed later than this line so basically in uh, since everything is asynchronous everything have tries to happen at the same time so before this is connected you can't go and do other stuff with the database like creating your dummy data because or else you'll get an error because if you're not connected they can't create any sort of dummy data all right so also we need also let's just yeah now let's create our dummy data so let's just create one dummy post so dummy post oh i need to declare the variable because this variable might be used everywhere so let's just declare the variable outside like a glo like globally so dummy post so dummy post will create a new instance of post object so there you have it you have a dummy title title dummy sorry for the noise i don't know my neighbors are going crazy all right so you have a dummy author like um for example someone <laughs> just writing off the bat and then a body a dummy body like lorem ipsum dior all right so we have our dummy data now we need to save it so we save it dummy post dot save and once you're done saving it might take time so we have a callback function where you have the error and the post and 
if there is an error just there's no rest.send over here you just basically console log that error because this is not an endpoint console dot log the error if not the default behavior should be I need the ID I need the ID to work with my endpoints so ID will be post dot underscore ID as you can see the IDs are stored in our Mongo Mongo with MongoDB in and underscore ID format if you look look carefully and all all right my server is not connected so I'll just show you later so the ID is a global variable as well so there you have it we created a dummy post now let's play around with our post API all right so after you are in the before after the before each block is done uh, what we want to do is we want to create we want we want to test our create post endpoint so create post post API create post now function we make here in the it block you basically make all your assertions like you the post API the describe block will describe the function and inside the function you want to have you can have multiple it blocks which will basically assert which will basically assert different parts of the function like you want to send actual data and see if the response is proper and you want to send wrong data and you want to see if the response is proper like it should throw an error if you send the wrong data and it should throw it should create a new post when you send the proper parameters properly so in the it block you basically make all your assertions about the post so this should create a new post right and we have it done as well because JavaScript is asynchronous and annoying in that way but that's what also makes it special so you have a request block so var request equal for example a request block will have your body right your I mean yeah you just basically send the body where you will have a dummy title this is right blah blah and a dummy body again blah 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 all right just get creative man I just this, these are the only things that are coming to my mind and then you have a response block where you'll make your assertions so var response equal so here we basically use our function that we've created before in our uh, test utils this function because this function will al allow us to actually make the assertions from the data that we get from rest.json or rest.send so let's first include this file over here so we have test utils equal require so in the require block you basically have the base folder plus the slash test slash utils you don't need to append the JS they can understand from the name that it's a JS file all right so test utils test utilities all right so in our test utilities function we'll be calling response validator response validator where you will send where you expect that the, the status code would be 200 and you have a post object that will be returned after creation so that post object should have the property title because this is what you send and after the function executes you should have the property title and you should have the title equal post dot title dot should dot equal blah blah and you also want to check uh, the indentation is all messed up you also want to uh, damn it all right so you also want to check if the post dot should dot have the property body 
and you also want to check the post dot should no, the post dot body dot should dot equal this whole thing post dot body dot should dot equal this whole thing right and after you make the assertions you're basically done you're making all of these assertions asynchronously now finally you want to call your function so post dot create post you send the request you send the response and when you send the response you should have this kind of assertions which would basically make sure that your create post endpoint works properly or not now the moment of truth we are basically gonna run our test so the the command that we use is npm test now let's see if this works right so it passes so we have one um, error not an error like a warning for the mongoose promises which is deprecated basically so i think the solution for this i faced this before and the solution is usually uh just declaring a different kind of promise library for mongoose so mongoose.promise equal global dot promise not mongoose's default promise now, after writing this, let's see if we still get this warning, sort of. Yeah, we don't. So, we are connected successfully to our test database and we created a new post with the endpoint itself. Let's see our test database. So, our test database does have a few stuff. So, as you can, as you can see, this was our dummy data. Dummy, someone, Lauren, it's a Dior. And then this was our create post stuff. Now you want to basically, you don't want all of this to stay in your database because as much as you, as, as many tests you make, you're going to keep on populating your test database and it, it's going to get heavy because of that. So what you would, what you want is you want a teardown phase. So we have our setup, we have our, uh, we have our one test. Now let's identify our teardown phase, which is the after block, like after all your test is done, you should do this. So function done and you want to remove all posts doesn't matter what you just want to remove them all because you don't want your database to be polluted with a lot of data so unless you have an error which you'll just console log and let me know console.log the error otherwise you're supposed to remove as is and we basically disconnect mongoose.disconnect successfully they're done all right so this is our teardown phase now let's test it out we're supposed to have an empty database after this function executes so let's check as you can see our test database is now cleared so all you do is just have a setup phase which is which is basically connected to our database and then having a dummy data which we can assert later on for posts for get posts and then you want to check your endpoints separately so you similarly create functions for you similarly create described blocks for other endpoint functions other controller functions like get post delete post update post and all that so in the next video we'll cover the others and i hope this video has been helpful and the series has been helpful. This is the first time I'm making a development series, software development series. So give a thumbs up to support the series and good luck.